It's nothing like starting with prayer, huh? <laughs> a good way to start the program. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, my friends, to 3ABN Worship Hour. This one's a little different from some of the ones we've done in the past, but I've learned that, you know, where some people may not be able to connect with the gospel, maybe in the preached word, many can also connect in the in music and song. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to be doing here today on the 3ABN Worship Hours. We're going to be reflecting on Scripture reflecting on the Word of God, in word, of course, and in song. And we want to thank you for joining us, because we know today is going to be a blessing for us, and it certainly, we hope, is a blessing for you as well. Amen. You know, that song I just sang, the Lord's Prayer, you know, the disciples came to Jesus, and they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. You know, Jesus said the best prayers. He was the Son of God. And could you imagine being able to ask that question and get a response from the God of the universe, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, come here, guys. Let me show you. Let me teach you how you should pray. And, of course, he says those words, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. This is New King James Version. It goes on to say, And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 
For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it's powerful about this, this particular verse here, this, this, this prayer. It's a model prayer. Now, in fact, often in many different Bible versions, it says before the prayer, you know, the model prayer, right? Yeah, right yeah. <laughs> we should model our prayers. That doesn't mean we should have to say the exact same words, but we should model our prayers after that of the one that Jesus shows us here. And I notice, you know, if, if you look at the beginning and the end of this prayer, it begins with praise and it ends with praise. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then, of course, it ends with for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. Praise is important, right, Tim? Totally important. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that passage, by the way, that I just read from, it's kind of, kind of a combination between Matthew 6, verses 9 through 13, and also Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. You know, go, go familiarize yourself with that prayer. And when you pray to the Lord, know that if you just model your prayer after Jesus' prayer, He hears you. And the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, that if we pray anything according to His will, that He hears us and He will, he will answer our petitions that we bring to Him. But praise is important. And that's what we're going to do a lot of today. We're going to praise our God in song and in word. And Tim... Uh, you know, as I said earlier, praise is important. And if you know, we just—if you've ever just read through the Book of Psalms, David and the song, all the psalmists, did many different psalmists that write in there. They're all about praising God, extending praise to the Lord in word. And we have some verses here, uh, just a few verses from Psalms. Would you mind reading those for us? Just, just familiarize us yeah. with how we, how our attitude should be about praise, right? Right. You know, I just want to mention quickly that praise is just an overflow, a response oh, yes. um, from your heart. Mm -hmm your heart, mm. it, from my heart to God in this yeah. case, yeah. Uh, because we can praise all different kind of uh, people, circumstances, situations. We, we can, uh, whatever we hold in high esteem and high regard. That's right. In fact, really what we spend the most time with we are praising it. Ooh. We are giving it honor. We're giving it uh, a place of, of recognition right. in our life. So um, praise is extremely important when it comes to God because it makes Him realize uh, we love Him and by the amount of time we spend with Him. And as you say in Psalm, Psalm 103, 1 says, Bless the Lord, one of my favorite. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Mm. Psalm 9, verse 1 and 2 says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. I love to sing praise. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. It's Absolutely. awesome. And Psalm 63, verses 3 and 4. Psalm 63, verses 3 and 4. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Yes. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. So many of yes. these psalms we sang. I remember singing these psalms in church. Yes. Um, I will yes. bless thee, O Lord. Right. I will bless thee, O Lord. Right. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, wonderful. And then Psalm 150, of course. Oh, man, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Mm. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. Praise Him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Praise Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, could you imagine just when we get to heaven, all the clashing cymbals, yeah. <laughs> right? And I don't think there's going to be a single person in heaven that's going to be like, oh, that hurts my ears. Oh, that's too loud. Because God says, praise me with these things. Praise the Lord. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're yes. going to sing a, actually a medley of two of one of my favorite, a couple of my favorite worship songs, beautiful lyrics. God Almighty. 
she reigns. Alleluia, holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, worthy is the Lamb.
Praise God, brother. Wow. I love, I love to praise God. I love to worship God. You know, we worship Him because the Bible says He's worthy because He created all things. I love the scene that John sees there in, in, in John chapter 4 and 5 because it's a throne room scene. Uh, and powerful to think that, you know, I know the Bible says, you know, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for us. But, but you know, prophets like John and Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, you know, Moses, these guys were able to, you know, have somewhat of a prophetic glimpse into the, the holy place and the most holy place. Wow of God's inner throne room, right? Wow, could you just imagine the majesty, the glory, the grandeur, wow. And you gotta get a glimpse of how important it is to praise God because you know not only do we praise God and should we praise God, but my goodness, the angels praise God, right? Perfect beings who have never sinned, they praise God. The Bible says that even the 24 elders, they cast their thrones at the feet of God and they bow to him and they worship him. And, 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 and I'm going to read these texts here. Listen to this, Revelation 4, verses 8 through 11. Just get this picture in your mind. This is similar to what, this is exactly what John saw. And the Bible says, the four living creatures which have, having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not, do not rest day nor night, saying, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Wow, right? Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. Here it is. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Here it is. For you created all things and by your will they exist and were created my goodness if perfect heavenly beings praise and worship god shouldn't we right oh yeah revelation 14 verse 7 reminds us again because he created all things he's worthy to be worshiped and what's that what's that first angel's message it goes to the rest of the world in the last days fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come here it is and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and springs of waters it's god is pointing us back to him even in the last days prior to the second coming of jesus he's saying look return to worshiping me the creator of the universe you know, God is, God is everything, everything there is to be good. And the Bible has so many different names for God. We worship Him, not only as He creator, and not only is He worthy to be worshiped because He is creator, but the Bible says He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We see that, we see that in the very first chapter of Revelation. We see it in the very last chapter of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. That famous verse in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 that says, you know, calls Jesus a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord. He's everything, right? And then, of course, Revelation 4, when you're in that throne room, Revelation 5 there, uh, more specifically, uh, shows Jesus appearing as a lamb slain before, you know, before the throne. And it's interesting that it goes on to describe that lamb as the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's a lamb, but yet he's a lion, right? <laughs> he's awesome. everything. And brother, I tell you, you know, we, we, we to, there, you know, to all, each of us, each of us, we see God and how we see him based on, of course, the scripture, but also our relationship, our experience with him. He's everything to us. And you sing a song. Uh, and, and I also grew up singing a song, very yeah, similar, yeah. two different songs, but a similar message. Right. And uh, I remember in this first song we're going to sing, a little quick, simple, but you know, nice little upbeat song called, uh, To Me He Becomes Everything. And then after I sing this one, I would love for you to go right into that song, He Is To Me, right? Okay. Because yeah. the messages are similar, different, but similar on how God, and He is everything to us, right? Without Him, we are nothing, but He is everything to us. So let's sing it. <laughs> Some have made Jesus a game that they play To others a song that they sing But since I've met Jesus, I'm happy to say To me He's become everything To me He's become everything He's everything that I need The beginning 
dearest friend To me he's become everything Amen, yes. <laughs> When I wake up each morning He's right by my side At night he's my last thought in mind He's joy for each moment He's hope that faith brings Who to me he's become everything that I need the beginning <laughs> the end he's a life's Fresh dearest friend, friend. Yes. to me he's become everything let's sing it again to me he's become everything he's everything that I need the beginning the end he's a life's dearest friend to me he's <laughs> become everything He's my past, the first and the last. To me, he's become everything. <laughs> he is to me, brother. Everything. Come on, you got to give it to oh, us. I love yes. this song, brother. He's the strength in my weakness, there you go. the joy in my sorrow, yes. the peace like a river that flows in my life. He's new morning mercies and hope for the journey mm. and love that will conquer the struggle and strife. Who can describe everything yes. that he is? All I can say is he's mine and I'm his. Cause the one who walks on the wings of the wind walks beside me. And the one who Holding the world in his hands Holds my heart He spoke and the world was created in space And yet he was willing to die in my place Redeemer, deliverer, the ransom that set my soul free Hallelujah, what a savior he is to me can't describe everything that he is yes. all I can say is he's mine and I'm his cause the one who walks on the wings of the wind walks beside me and the one who's holding the world in his hand holds my heart he just spoke and the world in space and yet he was willing to die in my place redeemer deliverer the ransom that set my soul free hallelujah what a savior he is to me what a savior goodness i love that yes <laughs> what a wonderful praise savior the lord he is. praise god and you know what i i you, the, set, the bible says that the angels envy us yes but i envy them in the fact that all they have to do is say, holy, holy, holy. Wow. They can remember that word. <laughs> I have trouble remembering my oh, but words. But I put you on the spot, so <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, we'll okay. forgive you for that. I, I, but I, I have to I, use <laughs> teleprompter. I, I, I'm telling on myself here. Look, if I didn't have these lyrics on teleprompter half the time, I wouldn't remember them. So I, I envy well, you to be able to remember all the lyrics you remember. So <laughs> No, it's, it's awesome. What a, what a privilege. And yes. again, as you say, the angels, they have the honor of praising. They were, they were created mm -hmm. to praise God. Yes, yes. But as the song says, mm -hmm. um, uh, angels, they don't know the joy that my salvation has brought me and given me reason yes, to amen. praise him. Praise God. So um, I'm, I'm glad that I'm amen. not an angel uh, <laughs> in that I have the, the experience of salvation. Praise God. Bro. Knowing that Christ God. died That's for my so sin. Correct. And, you know, he deserves all the glory. Amen. We live in a world where, you know, man amen. wants all the glory for himself. But the closer you come to Jesus, as John the Baptist said, he must increase and I must decrease. 
And uh, the closer I come to Jesus, I, I recognize that, that the things I used to like, I don't like anymore. And the things that I once really wasn't that into, the spiritual things of God, now I'm interested in. And there's that humbling experience, you know, that humility experience that you recognize that did, you know, similar to Isaiah, which I think we're going to read Isaiah's scripture in a little while, but similar to Isaiah and many other Bible characters in, in scripture that when they were in the presence of God and they saw God's righteousness, man, they looked and saw, saw their filthy rags and it's just, they were crumbled, they were humbled in front of him. I think of Paul, you know, scripture in Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 9. This is one of my favorite texts because Paul, right, the great man of faith, Paul, the Apostle Paul, man, that, you know, the majority of the New Testament is written by this man named Paul as the Holy Spirit inspired him. But he writes these words, Philippians chapter 3, verses 3 through 9. And reading in a, in a portion into that verse 3, it says, Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And then he lists his, uh, you know, his, his resume, you know, his holy resume. He says, even I more so, right? Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law. Uh, he says, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But then notice what he goes on to say in verse 7. He says, but what things were gained to me? These I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as, and I'm just going to say the King James Version right here, he says, I count it as dung, as poo-poo. That's what he says, the lowest of the lowest I count it. And then he says that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having my own righteousness. There's a song I love singing. We're going to sing it for you now. It's called In Christ Alone. Listen to the words as it very much is a reflection of what we just read. In Christ alone will I glory Though I could find myself in battles won For I've been blessed beyond measure and by His strength alone I overcome Oh, I could stop and count successes Like diamonds in my hand But those trophies could not equal To the grace by which I stand place my trust and find my glory in the power of the cross in every victory let it be said of me my source of strength my source of hope is Christ alone Christ alone will I glory, for only by His grace I am redeemed. Only His tender mercy could reach beyond my weakness to my need. Now I seek no greater honor than just to know Him more and to count my things but losses to the glory of my Lord. In Christ alone I place my trust and find my glory. Source of strength, my 
source of strength, my only hope is Christ alone. <laughs> but you know, all of us, you know, we're, we're striving to be perfect in Christ, but we're not absolutely perfect in and of ourselves. Only God's absolutely perfect. Let's just be sure. honest. <laughs> Let's just be honest, my friends. I mean, we believe, especially in the Seventh-day Adventist churches, the Bible teaches that we're striving for that perfection, that in God's eyes we can reach a perfect state in character. Talking about character perfection. But I don't think a single one of us is ever going to go out in this world and be like, hey, you know, look at me, I'm perfect. You know, I'm, you know, follow my example. No, because the closer you come to Jesus, the more unworthy you seem, right? Yeah. And especially when you, when you peruse the Bible, there's just so many Bible characters that prove this. Right. That, that, that even though God had grace upon them, even though that we considered them Bible heroes, some of these people were messed up. Right. I mean, they were a little messed up, right? I think of Adam, you know, and I, have, I made a list here, just to, just a list a few here. I mean, when you would look at their resume, that God, he did have patience with them. He, he shared, you know, he, he shed his mercy upon them. But my goodness, you look at some of these people. Adam, the first man, was a blame shifter who couldn't resist peer pressure, right? Mm -hmm. he, threw, he threw Eve right under the bus, you know. Mm -hmm. Adam, what have you done? It was the woman you gave me, right? <laughs> Abraham. <laughs> The forefather of faith, right? The scripture might refer to, he let other men walk off with his wife on two different occasions. Sarah let her husband sleep with another woman and then hated her for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the kind of people, right? I mean, they weren't absolutely perfect, but they were on a journey, right, in Christ. Jacob was pretty much a pathological mm -hmm. liar. I mean, I can go on and read through these. You know, Moses, <laughs> the, the humblest man on the face of the earth, right? But yet, uh, if you read, read on the scripture, he had a very serious problem with his temper, and it cost him a few times. Miriam, a songwriter, had a sibling jealousy problem and greed for power. You know, David, a man after God's own heart, was an adulterer and a murderer. I mean, this, we see these are, these are the biblical heroes. Peter not only had a temper problem, but also denied the Son of God in his presence. But Jesus still, still gave him grace, still forgave him. God is patient with us. And none of us are really, you know, these are people like us. Right. You sing a song. You sing a song. I, I want you to sing it. It's entitled People Like Me. And I love the words because it reminds us that we're, while we're reading these stories, these, these, are, these aren't some just like, you know, holier than thou saints. You know, these were people just like you and I. So anyways, this, this is just a wonderful song. It's one of my favorite songs. I'm going to be quiet. I'm just going to let you sing it. People Like Me. Oh, Peter had a temper. Thomas had his doubts Jacob was a liar And Jonah headed south Martha had her worries And Sarah was too old, or so she thought <laughs> David wasn't faithful And Moses wasn't bold I used to see them as stained glass saints Oh, they seemed almost divine But now I see them as flesh and blood With a heart a lot like mine yes. Just people like me In the hands of a gracious God And though He sees Where I've been and what I'm not What a beautiful mystery that he chooses and he uses people like me. Oh, it is such a wonder. What a beautiful mystery that God chooses and God uses people like we. Oh, I like that. People like we. <laughs> oh. That may not be proper grammar, you know but he uses it works. us. <laughs> it works. That's right. People like us and us and, and, and me doesn't rhyme, so that's a right. good word. <laughs> Praise God, brother man. 
I just, we just serve a mighty God. And, and you know, in order for us to be able to ensure that we're, we're going to be in that same, on that, along that same path, of righteousness as some of those heroes that we look up to, even though they weren't, you know, perfect in the absolute sense, they obtained, each one of those, like us, we must obtain that character perfection in Christ. But how do we do that, right? We got to look to Jesus. We got to behold Christ each and every moment of every day. You know, there's some, there's some scriptures that I, that I love, that I could read, tons of scriptures I could read for this particular portion, but there's just one passage, you know, we're told that in John chapter 3, and there is no other place in all the Bible where salvation is made more clear than John chapter 3. And, and most people, when they think of John 3, they think of John 3, 16, 16 you know. Sure. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Beautiful text, powerful text. But I'd submit to you, as I've said many times on 3ABN, I believe verse 14 and 15 is the, the key verses. Because out of everything that Jesus tells Nicodemus, the one thing that he could do to, to hurry uh, the work, could quicken the work of the Holy Spirit in his life, is John 3, verse 14. Notice what Jesus says here. He says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And then verse 15 with that says, That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, Nicodemus' mind man, went immediately to Numbers 21. He would have been familiar with the law, right, with the Torah. And his mind would have went like ours should to that scene where Moses is lifting up that serpent. And some people say, why a serpent? And the serpent represents the devil. It represents sin. Absolutely sin for sure. But in this case, remember the Bible says that Jesus became sin for us, that we might have the righteousness of God in him, right? When they looked at that, up at that uplifted serpent wrapped around the top of that pole, that was foreshadowing the work that Jesus would do on the cross. In other words, the only way that they could be saved from all of those serpents that were biting them in the wilderness is by faith. First, believe in the word of God that when he said, look at the serpent, there's life in a look at our Savior, Jesus Christ. This next song, man, oh, I just, I, it's one of my all-time favorite songs. My dad used to sing this. It's an old Henson song, and it's entitled Look to Him. Beautiful words, beautiful lyrics. I'd like to sing it for you and for Jesus right now. Beautiful song. I hope it blesses you. Well, I know the Bible says When you've done all you can to stand Just stand I know it's hard sometimes to look through these tear-stained eyes and still see the scars in those hands. But just you keep this in mind when hope seems so hard to find. Surely let you down Jesus he can still be found when you've tried it all look to him look to him for he only when sorrow makes lonely He can vanish the midnight and come back the sunlight. So how will it end? Look to Him. Now I know the questions can oh they can be so hard to understand but then you see I know someone who knows it all his eyes see even that little sparrow fall yet he can hold back the 
sea with just one hand. That's right. He's so big he rides on the breeze that blows. Yet in your heart, he's the only one that knows the heartache and all the trouble you're in. Oh, when life seems everything but good, remember him, cause he's the only one that could. If you don't need death. Look to Him, look to Him, for He only, the wind sorrow makes lonely all the day, and the night closes in. Just look to him. Just look There's to him. Keep life your eyes and on a him. look at the Savior. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise the I Lord. Like Praise the Lord. Don't we serve a good God? <laughs> awesome God. Oh my goodness. Awesome. My goodness. You know, we, we we often in this life fall into various trials and, and troubles and, and despairs and different challenges that just depress us often. And sometimes we, we find ourselves shaking the fist at God sometimes saying, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen to me, right? You know, I heard a minister once say, and I often, rem I say this as much as I can, as much as I can remind people to encourage them, that we oftentimes might challenge or question the plan of God. Yeah. Oh, but we will never have sufficient reason to question His goodness. Never. The Bible says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. You know, Jesus isn't going to ask us to do anything, Tim, that he hasn't done himself, right? We can't even imagine what he's been through, right? More than we could ever begin to fathom. That's why Hebrews 12, 2 says, looking unto Jesus. There it is, look to him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And then this next part is a mystery. But it says, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despised the shame. You know, we don't have anything to worry about because we serve a good God. Tim, my favorite song that you sing God's been good. Sing it for us, brother. Lately I've been looking back Along this winding road To the old familiar markers Of all the mercies I've known I know it may sound simple But it's more than a cliché for there's no better way to tell you than to say God's been good in my life And I feel blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night Though I've had my share of hard times I wouldn't change them if I could For through it all God's been good The 
times replay and I can see that I've cried some bitter tears but I felt his arms around me as I faced my greatest fears you see I've had more gains than losses and I've known more joy than hurt as his grace rolled down upon me so undeserved for God's been I feel so blessed beyond my wildest dreams when I go to sleep each night. And though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. For through it all, God's been so good. You know, the writer of that song actually uh, went through a season after she had written the song. Uh, a terrible situation happened where her son passed away, actually. And um, a friend of hers several years later filled in that line that says, Though I've had my share of hard times, I wouldn't change them if I could. She wrote, I'd probably change them if I could. And I've sung it like that a few times. Because if you're going through things, uh, looking back, you would probably right. change some things. That's the humanity in his It is the yeah. humanity. But I like that verse, as you were saying in Hebrews. Uh, he For the, for the joy for the, that was set before that's him. That's the one. He endured the cross, that's despising right. the shame. Yes. What if we don't go through trials, <sighs> the things that draw us closer to God? That's right. It's It's fact of life that we have to go through those things mm. uh, we just do yeah you know I think it's Malachi chapter 3 I believe it is that says he is like launderers, launderers soap mm -hmm. and he also sits as a refiner and purifier of silver right. and, and what you're saying is just reminding me of this because we often ask the question why does God allow us or, or why do we have to go through these things right if you think about how a silversmith, and I, you know, I, I looked into this as well because I heard a story about it, how a silversmith gets the purest form of silver. Again, he sits as a refiner and purifier of silver. He'll take that you know, ugly piece of silver that's unrefined, that's not clean, that's not been purified, and he will hold it with those, that little small piece of tongs, per se. He'll hold it in the hottest part of the flame. You know, Sometimes God will allow us to walk through the fire, but Isaiah 43 promises us, and we don't have to walk through that fire alone. No, He's there no, with us. That's the, that's right? the good that's part. The key, that's the key, right? You know, the three Hebrew go, men had to go into the fire, but God was with yeah, them, he right? Was with them. Right, exactly. And if we didn't go through those things, we wouldn't, we right. wouldn't sense his nearness. That's right. I mean, naturally, I would like to think that I have some sense enough to uh, just be in his word and study yes. it and, and, and feel his presence without Amen. going through tr troubles. But when I do go through Amen. troubles... I sense an even greater presence That's right. of God. That's right, brother. Amen. For he goes with us. Powerful. Right. So, powerful. Anyway. You know, it reminds me of a story. Um, this will be this will be our last song. I, I want to tell you a story behind one a, a famous song we've often heard as Christians. And this will kind of this will be an appeal for our worship hour. I want to appeal to you watching at home. Maybe you're going through some things in your life. Maybe maybe you're struggling to commit. To Christ because of whatever you're going through. You know, there was a there was a family team. This is actually a true story, by the way. This is not made up. I, I looked it up. There was a there was an Indian family over, I think it was in the maybe the, the state of Assam. I can't remember the exact state, but it's in India, the country of India. This is back in mid to late 1800s. And of course, this particular village, this Indian village in, in India, was predominantly major. I mean, all of them were Hindu. But one day came this Christian missionary through this village. He had been making his way through, sharing the good news of Jesus. And the majority of the village, obviously, the, of this particular place in India, the majority of the people weren't interested at all. But there was one family, one family, who was interested to hear what this Christian missionary had to say. This brother comes in and shares with them the gospel of Jesus. 
and it transformed their life. Now, in this culture, the man of the house, he's obviously the man of the house, right? Most of the time, the, the wife, the children will follow the father or the husband figure. But this whole family made their own choice after they heard the good news of Jesus preached by this Christian missionary. They made their decision to follow Jesus. And the story is, it's a sad one, but yet also a story of hope. Because now the Christian missionary leaves and word spreads in this community that this family, who was once Hindu, has now converted to this Christian God, this Christianity. And so the chief of the village holds a hearing in which all the village gather. They basically cast the family in the middle of the court there and wherever all the eyes are looking upon them and the chief says to the man because he's the man of the house right he's led his family into this he's allowed this this decision to be made so he's kind of the catalyst of all of this and so the chief says to the man he says I'm going to give you an opportunity to save you and your family's life today if you will just recant this Christian God just denounce this Christianity and you and your family will be saved today. Return back to the faith of Hinduism. Well, you could just imagine this man in all of, in all of the emotion and everything that's happening at this moment. He looks at his precious children. He looks at his wife. But the story goes that in that moment, he remembered some lyrics, some words that he had written down. It was turned into a song, a song that you know. And he looks at that chief and he says these words. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. And the chief had his precious children murdered in front of him. Oh, I can't imagine the emotion, the despair, the fear, the shock. But the chief again said, to the father and now the mother but he's looking at the father the husband and he says you know what you can save your wife's life you can save your life if you'll just give up this Christian God and I'm sure with tears crying emotion of all the strength he could possibly muster up I'm sure he took a glance at his wife whom he loved dearly and the story says he turned to that chief and he said Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. Turning back. They took his wife and they murdered her in front of him. And so the chief calls out one last time. He says, You know, there's no need for you to die, also. I'll give you one last chance. Recant this Jesus. Turn back. And the man, with the, full of the Holy Spirit, cried out and he said the world behind me the cross before me the You know, that's a sad story, my friends, but it's a true story. But you know where the hope is, is that in the months to come, 
that chief and nearly that entire village converted to Jesus Christ because they wondered who is this God that these people would die for my friends I want to appeal to you today as we as we about to end this have you decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back give your heart to Jesus while you can let's sing that again in closing sing with us at home I have a you, my friends.